pretty far back. Yeah. Get him up. Oh, did he get me stuck on the bottom? Something else grab him? Must have. Now I can feel him. Pizza. Now many believe that the anchovy is the best fish topping for a pizza, but in reality the best fish for a pizza is the Key West Yellowtail Snapper. Ready for pizza. Today's catch and cook is a great option if you suck at fishing. Because if you don't catch anything, it still tastes great. So for today's catch and cook, we're going to be doing a yellowtail snapper pizza. Now for the pizza part, super, super easy. Way uncomplicated. Uh, definitely a better way to go than doing the frozen foods or even Domino's. But uh, for the ingredients for the pizza itself, real basic kitchen ingredients, nothing fancy. Uh, two cups of unbleached flour, a uh, pinch of sugar just to feed the yeast, a little bit of uh, instant yeast here, and then the, some uh, warm water, a pinch of salt for a little bit of flavor, and then a dab of oil to keep things moist. And that's basically the dough recipe right there. Nothing crazy about it. And then on top of that, you just have whatever your favorite pizza sauce, uh, spaghetti sauce, you can make your own sauce, and then a little bit of cheese. And that's basically it. Keep it very basic, easy as you want it, or as crazy as you want it. But that's the basics right there. To start off, we're gonna get the uh, yeast uh, growing. And uh, all that is is just some um, rapid rise instant yeast. I'm gonna use about a teaspoonful. This is about two thirds cup of uh, warm water. And I'm just gonna add that to it. That water is going to activate that yeast. And then on top of that, we're going to just add a pinch of regular table sugar. And that's just going to give that yeast a little bit of food. And we're just going to let that sit for a minute and kind of start building. Okay, now after a minute, it's created this nice little slime there. Pond scum, basically. So now that we know that the, that yeast is going, I'm just going to add about a tablespoon of oil there and that's just to kind of keep the uh, the dough batter uh, moist okay get that sugar mixed up a bit all right now let's get the second component ready okay for the second half we're just gonna take two cups of regular unbleached flour there these are all And just about a teaspoon of salt. And give that a quick mix. And then we can add our yeast mixture. OK. 
Okay, and then we're just gonna fold that all in together. Okay, she's got, she's got it temporarily mixed together. But as you can see, it's not super sticky, where it's gloppy and sticking to the sides. So that's pretty good there. And we still need to do the kneading process. This just gets it all mixed up, is all you want to do in the bowl. And then now we're going to take it out of the bowl and start kneading it by hand. Okay, we flour our surface there, and then we could drop our unneaded dough there and then we get our hands dirty Just a little bit of flour and just get to kneading this is the fun part And just add a little bit of flour, a little bit more water, just whatever you need. But remember, you don't, it shouldn't need to be, you don't need it to be sticky. If it's sticky, then it's a little bit too wet and you can just gradually keep dusting it until you get that uh, elasticy, doughy tension to it. And you're going to do this for five, ten minutes. Now that our dough has been all kneaded up, I'm uh, just going to take a regular little bowl there, add a, just a touch of olive oil, a little bit more there, and then you're just going to coat the edges because we're going to allow the dough to uh, rise in here. And what I like to do is to kind of just drop it in there, swirl it around a bit, get a little bit of oil on all the sides of the uh, dough, and then flip it back over. Do the same thing. So it's just got a nice little coating. And we're good to go. I'm going to put a piece of saran wrap over the top and it's just going to sit for about an hour and a half in a non breezy, cool area. And there we go. Just time to wait. Ah, it's been a little over an hour here and you can see that it is probably more than doubled in size there. So we're actually going to knead it now. And then this is more than we need for just one pizza. Um, really, I, I can probably make a two eight to 10 inch pizzas with this or maybe one 14 to 16 inch pizza. But my pizza stone, and I'll show that later, isn't big enough to do uh, more than a 12. But we're going to, oops. Add a little bit of flour here to our working surface. And we're gonna just roll that out. And we're going to give it a light kneading. Okay, then we're going to cut this in half. dough ball it up and squish them down a little bit Throw a little bit of flour on top there okay and we're gonna cover those and let it rise for uh, one more time. Okay, it's been about an hour. You can see how fluffy they've doubled up there. So, I could take this one off. I'm just gonna throw it in this. Keep that to the side. I'm gonna make a breakfast pizza out of that one. And then we've got this guy. All fluffy and ready to go. Again, make sure we're floured up there. And then we're gonna make our 
pizza now. And I'm just going to slowly press this guy, stretch it out. Non più dry farfalon yamoroso, notte giorno di torno girano, delle belle torbando al riposo, ma ci sento a tu cibo d'amor. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer the uh, crust there to a uh, regular plate. And this is what I'm going to basically use to transfer it to uh, the barbecue. And I'm going to put a little bit of uh, cornmeal on there. And all this is for is to uh, allow it to slide is basically all it does. And we could transfer this onto the plate. Okay. And because that cornmeal's on there, it's not gonna stick and it'll slide right off there as well as when it's on the pizza stone. Okay, there's our base. Now this is my DIY uh, pizza stone. It's just basically a travestine tile. Um, it was originally 18 by 18 inches and I just cut it down to fit this. I got around 14, 13, 14, so it just slides right in there. Um, you can get these from like Home Depot or anywhere that sells flooring. Uh, I think I paid around $6 for it and it's good to go. All I do is just give it a quick wipe down and get off the old pizza stuff off of it. Throw it on top of the uh, barbecue and burn the hell out of it. Turn it up as high as you can. Let it go for about a half an hour or longer so this thing just heats up until as hot as you can be. And then you're basically going to lay the crust of the pizza on there. It's going to start cooking right away, get that crust going, and then closing the top will get the heat and cooking the top. Okay, I've got it on. Highest setting that I can go on the, the barbecue, and then I'm just going to let it heat up. It's topping time. Uh, what we're going to do is lay out a little bit of tomato sauce. of your choice. Don't have to go too crazy. Don't have to get on the, the edge of the crust there. More than enough. Then uh, I've got mozzarella and I've got Parmesan. I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of Parmesan first. Don't go too heavy on Parmesan. Remember that's got a lot of uh, flavor to it. So I'm just gonna do a light touch there. Then got some mozzarella we're just going to lay down some chunks here again you don't have to go heavy but just whatever you like if you want it oozing then double it up but sometimes less is more Couple more little bits here. Okay, good to go. Now I'm still waiting a little bit for the uh, barbecue stone to heat up, so just got a few minutes. Stone is just about heated up enough, so we're gonna do our finishing touches. I'm gonna sprinkle on a little bit of uh, oregano. Then we're going to put our yellowtail snapper fillets. I coated them fairly heavily with um, Everglades heat because we want this to be kind of a savory uh, topping. So I'm just going to throw a few on there. Just like that. And a little bit of basil to liven things up. Alright, and that is our finished pizza there, ready to go on the stove. All right, our stone is good. 
I'm going to lay a little bit of the cornmeal on there so it makes sure that it slides off okay. And then just drag and drop this dude best we can. And there we go. Shut the lid and let it cook. Alright, let's take a look. Ooh, nice. Browned up very well. Alright, let me get a plate. Right off, ready to go. All right, there you go. Key West style fish pizza using little yellowtail snapper, done on the barbecue. But you can see by that crust, oh, nice and perfect. Browned on the top. So I'm gonna slice this baby up. And give it a try. Alright, let's cut a slice here. Ooh, nice and cheesy. Perfect crust. How's this gonna taste? All right, let's give this a try. Oh, can you focus? Can you? Will you? Hello? Focus? Maybe? Maybe not? If I take over the whole screen, will you focus? If I go back a little bit? There you go. Hmm. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. Excellent. Crispy on the bottom. Mm, nice and juicy on the top. That's the way to go. Mm. Nice chunks of fish. That crust just comes out so perfect. And even on the barbecue grill. As you can see, it's very easy to do. There's a time span to making it because you have to wait, but it's just waiting periods. The actual doing stuff is actually really quickly. So. Highly recommend, very cheap to do. If you have a barbecue, get one of those uh, stones, throw it on there, you're good to go, five bucks. Or you can even oven do it if you want to. Summertime, heat up your house though. Hmm. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the video. Definitely recommend do, giving this a try, even if you just want to do plain pizzas. But. Excellent, excellent option. So, thank you again. Thanks a lot. And I'll see you next video. Bye.